Now, as time passed, it's very important that we picture what happened. There was one of the sons known as Kabil or Cain. He had aggressiveness in his behavior. He had greed. He had arrogance. He was a tough character, difficult to get along with. So what he did, he decided to depart, to leave the rest and to go away on his own somewhere very far away. So Adam alayhi salam, prior to his death, he used to live with Sheath alayhi salam and with all these other children of his in the mountainous regions, in the mountains. And now this young man decided or Kabil decided to go to the valleys and to go to the flat land somewhere further away. Later on, Sheath alayhi salatu was salam was given an instruction by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Part of his sharia was that it was prohibited to mix with the people who were gone on to the other side. This man, Kabil, took his own family with and he went away. They had their children, they had their own characteristics and it was prohibited to mix with them. That was the sharia revealed to Sheath alayhi salatu was salam. And they followed it, they did not mix and they were saved to a great degree. After some time, a problem arose. If we recall, Shaytan, when he refused to prostrate to Adam, alayhi salatu wasalam, he made a promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, I promise you, I will show you, I'll lead them astray. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, go and try. Whoever follows you from amongst them, they are losers. They will be with you in hellfire. But my worshippers who worship me, who have turned to me, you will never be able to overpower them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to overpower the devil rather than him overpowering us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and this verse is made mention of in Surah Al-Isra. وَمَا يَعِدُهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ إِلَّا غُرُورًا Allah says, Go, O devil, O Satan, O Iblis, go and try and befool them gradually as you wish. Go and use your sound. Now the word salt is used. Use your salt. What is the salt of shaitan? The sound of shaitan. The voice of shaitan. The Mufassireen, almost all of them have made mention of music and musical instruments. And this is a verse in Surah Al-Isra. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Go, try and control them. Use whatever you have at your disposal. Those who know me and those who worship me, they will never follow you. So he says, Allah says, Go and try. You can use your sounds. You can use your cavalry. You can use your infantry. And go and be a partner in their wealth. Which means go and teach them whatever you want. What was that meant to be? Look at the books of Tafsir. They all make mention of illegal income, illicit, prohibited relationships. The income number one, when a person wants to derive income from that which is prohibited and the next part of the verse says, go and be a part of their relationships as well. In their children, you can have a portion. And what the Mufassireen say is this means go and encourage them to do what you want in terms of illicit sexual behavior. And let's see what happens. Let's see who wins. Allahu Akbar. So Shaitan from that time, from that time, he bore this in mind. And he was given this authority as a test for all of us. Remember, why are we here? We are here because Adam alayhi salatu was salam had promised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I seek forgiveness for what I've done and I will not do it again. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent man onto earth in order to test them. One word, test. So if anyone thinks we are here for another reason, they are wrong. We know we are here for a test. Everything we see is actually a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, this evening also we had verses that we had read where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya amanu la Beautiful verses of the Quran. You see, in the condition of Ihram, it is prohibited to hunt. So Allah says, Oh, you who believe, 
we will test you by making something happen for you when you are in the condition of ihram those hunting animals will come very close to you as though they are saying hunt me hunt me but remember it's prohibited that we will do for you just to test you who is going to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unseen to them but they know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all watchful so this means in our lives in fact it reminds me of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about in the Quran the Jewish people very interestingly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they had a Sabbath the Sabbath they declared that on this day you cannot work at all so what happened Allah tested them the same way you know the Quran says on that Saturday, the fishermen who were not allowed to work according to their own laws, they saw the fish as though the fish are saying, come fish. We know that it's a day when you're not allowed to fish. Amazing, amazing. So in order to come around that, they used to cast their nets Friday evening, pick them up on Sunday morning. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. So Allah says, you cannot do that. This is a test. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test all of us. Certain things are at hand. They are reachable. They are, if I can use the word, committable. A sin is committable. But whether we commit it or not depends on how much we fear Allah and what consciousness we have of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this shaitan, he remembered this and he then came. He decided, let me go and tackle man. And I want to show man how to sin. Because man had to learn how to sin. Remember, if you haven't seen something, you probably wouldn't know how to do it. I was speaking to one of the youngsters from amongst us here two days back. Very interesting. And he made mention of something regarding materialism. That you see, if you are driving the latest Mercedes, and next year, if Mercedes does not advertise the newer one they have, you will be so happy with yours because you haven't yet seen the new one. And two, three years later, you will still be happy with yours for as long as you believe it's the latest one. The same applies to your phone. When you have the iPhone, for example, they call it the iPhone 4. You'll be so happy with it, subhanallah, because you have not yet seen the 6 that has come out. Allahu Akbar. See, everyone's looking at me. When did that come out? Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Don't worry, I don't know of it. But this is how man is. That when you don't know something, you're happy. This is why you have your wife, you'll be happy with her. The minute you do not lower your gaze and so on, you start getting upset with what you have based on something you don't even know. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. The same applies to our condition as man. We're happy with what we have and we are so happy with it for as long as we don't know that there is something that might make us happier. Allahu Akbar. Why take the risk? Be happy, be content. So shaitan decided the same thing and what he did is he said you see these people who are with Adam alayhi salam and now that he's passed away Sheikh alayhi salam he may recognize me because he knows shaitan he decided that let me come in the form of a man and I will go to the to those who are with Sheikh and I will pretend as though I'm a defector from this side sorry I will go to those who are with Qabil those who are with Cain, I will go to that side and pretend like I've defected from sheath. Now there was a distinct, distinct sign. You could see very clearly the men from Qabil's side were not very good looking. We heard about that. And the women were very good looking. And they had gone one side. When it comes to where sheath alayhi salam and the rest of them were, the men were very good looking and the women were not that good looking according to narrations I'm not speaking obviously from my own pocket here so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept it such that shaitan went to that side in the form of a handsome man and when he went there he asked for a job look I need employment I need to be employed here so what happened they looked at him they decided yes good man come let's employ you at least we got one defector someone has defected let's give him a job so he got a job and as a man, he worked amongst them and he worked very hard. And then he slowly started. What did he start doing? It's important we listen to this. He slowly started making sounds, a sound that people had never heard before. 
Because there were, there were no sounds that people had heard. That was the beginning of time. And now he took, he created a little drum and he beat it. And everybody would come. What's that sound? And they would come around him and watch. Then he got a bit of metal and he started hitting it. And then it created a sound and they came. And then he made a bugle and he started blowing into it. And it created a sound and they came and they were excited. Wow, these people are intelligent. They, are, they have advanced much more than us. And so they were so happy. And they got so engrossed in it that they slowly started forgetting the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They slowly started forgetting the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet, on the other hand, Sheikh alayhi salam kept on reminding his people. He kept on speaking with his people and he kept on telling his people what was right and what was wrong and so on. And on this hand, we find that shaitan is teaching them how to do evil, how to create evil. And after some time, they began to follow him. And when they began to follow him, it created this disaster for them. This is how they introduced the musical instruments into existence. This is how they introduced the musical instruments into existence. And through that, he would control them. They literally set aside a day, an evening, a Saturday evening. And amazingly, to this day, it lasts. To this day, it lasts. They set aside that evening where he would create these sounds. Everybody would come around and everybody would listen to him. And everybody would literally party. Party. They would party. Until there came a time when some of the youth from Sheath alayhi salatu was salam were visited by shaitan. And what did he do to them? Something interesting. He went to them and he created a doubt in their minds. He made them ask a question. He made them question the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why is it that we are not allowed to mix with these cousins of ours, with these relatives of ours? What is the law all about? What is the reasoning? What is so bad about them? Look at this question. Let's put it into our lives. Sometimes when we are taught not to have certain company, not to have certain friends, not to move in a certain direction. What is it that is so bad about these people that we should not be mixing with them? So when they started asking this question, it was answered for them that look, Qabil had engaged in a crime right at the beginning. He, he engaged in a sin at the very beginning. And this is what he did. He engaged in murder and his characteristics were different and so on. And for this reason, they were all on one side and we are ordered not to mix with them. These youth were dissatisfied with the answer. Nah, doesn't sound too good to us. We're not happy with it. When they were not happy with it, some of them decided, let's just have a peep at what's happening. Because we, we've heard that here things are going on. These people are progressing. Let's go and see. So they came down from the mountains and they went. And from a distance they were watching. And they had seen. And it pulled them. Imagine they, they did not intend to engage in evil. But when they saw everybody's partying. And what did they see? They saw very good looking females. They saw very good looking females. And so they went closer. And when they went closer, they were seen. Subhanallah. They were seen. And they were good looking men. So the women began to engage in what is known as tabarruj. Tabarruj meaning to start displaying their beauty. And to start dressing up in order to attract. This was the first time shaitan taught them this. Now if you take a look at the tafsir of the Quran, you will find in Surah Al-Ahzab, there is a verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as well as the believing women who take a lesson from that. Allah says, وَقَرْنَ فِي بُيُوتِكُنَّ وَلَا تَبَرَّجْنَ تَبَرُّجَ الْجَاهِلِيَّةِ الْأُولَى Remain indoors as far as possible and do not adorn yourself in a wrong manner in a wrong manner, meaning for those who are not meant to be seeing you in the way that the, those of the first ignorance engaged in. So Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, who is a great mufassir, he says, this is referring to the women of Qabil's side who used to beautify themselves in order to be made attracted to these males. And this is where the story comes up. Al-Jahiliyyatul Ula mentioned in this tafsir 
mentioned by Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, his view is that this is what it was. And we are just using that today in order to put forward what happened. So when that happened, these young men, they came in and they enjoyed themselves. They had music, they had women, they had so much. They were partying, they were enjoying and they went away. See, it's typical what happens nowadays. You have the weekend, people go, and after that they come back home at three in the morning. You know, we use the word babalas. I don't know what is used by the, by the people here, which means they're half drunk, you know. They don't even know whether they are coming or going. Allahu Akbar. So as the men came back, they told the other youngsters, hey, you don't know what you're missing out on. You see there, they've got different sounds, and these sounds are amazing. Now look. Shaytan uses sound to control man. Wallahi, if you take a look at what a beat is, what is a beat? You start tapping your fingers. What happened? Who's controlling this finger of yours? Shaytan. What happens to your, your toe? It starts flicking. What happens to your head? It starts moving. What happens to your waist? It starts shaking. Allahu Akbar. Who's controlling it? Let's be honest. It started at that time. It started at that time. And it is controlled. The one who can make you tap your finger on your steering wheel can easily make you murder. The one who can make you tap your finger on a steering wheel can easily lead you to adultery. He will create it in your heart and beautify it. He can do one thing and you continue. He will do another. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. So thereafter, these people came back with a bigger group. And they came back with a larger group and the group was growing and every time that party happened there were people from this side who used to quietly go to that side and they used to engage in sin the first sins music was invented and what else was invented created was adultery may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us this is the history of it made mention by some of the historians and it is very very important very very interesting for us to note this because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also told us in the Quran about al jahiliyyatul ula although there are no details the details we get from some of the mufassirin and some of the historians so this is how it started and this is why it's important for us today to understand that not everything that glitters is gold not everything that glitters is good for us. Not everything that appears to be so attractive is actually good for us. Because if we go in that direction, we could be falling straight into the trap of shaitan.